Adventure Ahead. The National Broadcasting Company presents another in the new series of famous stories for young people, Adventure Ahead. This week, that classic of thrilling adventure, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, a story which brought reading excitement to over 15 generations of boys and girls. And so, adventure ahead. Adventure. The one thing that I wanted most in life. To sail the far off sea. To seek my fortune in the mystery of distant lands. For I'd have none of England's peaceful shores in 1651. I meant to make my own adventure in the world alone. Robinson? Yes, Father? You're determined to leave home, your friends, and to follow this mad impulse? It's not an impulse, Father. I've always wanted to go to sea and visit foreign countries. Now that I've finished school, I'm going up to London and sign aboard the first ship I can find. And nothing I can say will make you change your mind? No, Father. You're making a mistake, my son. You're young and inexperienced. But, but I'm almost a man. I can learn. Perhaps. But it won't be easy, Robinson, when you're alone, away from friends and family. Oh, I'll never be lonely. That doesn't bother me. Loneliness? You don't know what it is to be lonely, son. But you'll learn someday when you're without friends, without hope, and without courage. And that'll be the test, Robinson Crusoe, of whether or not you're a man. Think you want to sail for Brazil, lad? Yes, sir. Most anywhere, Captain. Well, we can use you on the crew. Oh, thank you, sir. Bring your gear aboard. We're underway tonight. southwest by west, through the Caribbean Sea, well off the trade routes. But the way went well until we reached the Caribe coast, the cannibal coast of South America. And there we ran afoul a tropic storm, tempest hurricane, that lashed and tore against our ship, snapped the main the stricken ship, but we were tossed and shaken like a matchbox in the heavy sea, engulfed by every wave, until our boat could stand no more. Caught by a mountainous wave, it splintered. <laughs> Spilling us into the roaring sea, I, I clutched a broken piece of wood, watching all the others driven past me, hoping that I might somehow keep afloat and reach the dim outline of land I saw ahead. A tiny island in the storm. Tossed up along the sandy beach, I pulled myself beyond the surf. Thank God that I was alive. Cold and wet. Desolate. Alone. I seemed to be the only member of the crew to reach the island. The only one alive. And even with the storm around me, I fell asleep, weary, exhausted, and very much alone. In the 
morning, I was still alone. The storm had blown itself away, and the tropic sun beat down upon the island, drenching all the jungle wilderness with suffocating heat. The island wasn't very large, not more than five or six miles square, but covered with a dense and tangled foliage, a solitary forest of mystery and silence suggesting that I might well be the only human on that lonely strip of land. And the strong, strange feeling of being very much alone possessed me. But as I looked out to sea, the ship, I saw our ship, or what was left of her. Caught on the reef, she lay about a mile offshore, broken, splintered, decks awash. It was impossible that anyone could be alive out there, and, and yet... The feeling now of loneliness, of wanting to find a fellow man, sent me swimming out, far out to board the stricken ship. Hello! Hello there! Is anyone aboard? Hello! Only the wind answered my call. The ship was empty, broken, useless, like a twisted shell, and crumbling fast beneath the pounding waves and heavy tide. And then I knew full well the island was to be my home, where I must try to live alone as best I could until some help arrived, another ship. But that might well be months or even years. And since the ship had stores aboard that I could use, I collected all the tools and sails, gunpowder and a fowling piece, two pistols, knives, and everything that I might need. While searching near the pilot house, I heard a sudden noise. Who's there? Who's in there? Oh, the, the, the dog. Hello there, my friend. Glad to see me, huh? Oh, I wonder how you lived through the storm. No, I can't leave you here to die. You're coming back with me, my friend. You and I alone, that island over there. And so I built myself a raft from broken yard arms, lashed the wood together, loaded all my precious cargo, guns and powder... Tools, some bedding in a hammock, spare canvas and a spyglass, flour and biscuit, and my dog all floated back and landed on the island. The deserted island that was to be my home. I made a tent of canvas to shelter for the first few nights. Then with tools, I built a stronger home, a sturdy dugout cabin, using forest wood I cut and hewed with muddy earth to fill the chinks and cracks. And after that, a fence, a high stockade to protect me from the jungle. Yes, I was secure within my castle then and felt content with what was mine. But I also felt more strongly a sense of loneliness and Sometimes at night I dream. Loneliness? You'll learn about it someday, son, when you're without friends or hope or courage. And that will be the test, my son, of whether or not you're a man. Build a well-protected home, I took my musket and my dog and went afield most every day, exploring all the jungle woodland, hills and valleys. But I found no trace of living man upon the islands. No animals except a few wild goats quite difficult to kill. But hoping to domesticate them, I caught a few and built a small enclosure for them near my habitation. So obtained fresh milk and meat. I found several springs for drinking water. And the jungle teemed with birds and parrots, but they were all unfit to eat. One day I caught a parrot, though, and then resolved to teach him how to speak. It was at least a way to offset loneliness. Ah, 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 Crusoe, Crusoe. <laughs> well, Polly. Ah, ah, poor 
Abbasid Croso. <laughs> oh, poor Abbasid Croso. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, poor Robinson Crusoe. With my fur cap and tattered clothing, sun umbrella made of goatskin and my dog and parrot, I must have looked a strange, pathetic sight. But it was the best that I could do. And if I seem downcast and woeful, it's because the future seems so hopeless. I felt so much alone. Although I watched the seaward constantly, there was no sign of ship or sail. I knew it might be years until a shipper boat came near. My only destiny was loneliness. Uh, 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 poor Robinson Crusoe. Uh, uh, three years on this blasted island. Yes, uh, it's been a full three years. Uh, three years. But at least we made some progress, huh? Uh, uh, We've uh, cultivated land, raised our own food, corn and wheat. I counted all our goats yesterday, Polly. Uh, uh, Goats. 422 uh, goats. Not bad, huh? Uh, uh, not bad. Well, at uh, that rate, in 20 years, I'll... 20 years? Can it be possible that I'll be stranded here for 20 years? Come along. This way. <laughs> That's a good dog. Now well, we're almost to the other beach. Uh, uh, uh. I expect I should have left you at home, Polly. Uh, uh, for so. uh. Seems we haven't been over on this side of the island for almost a year. Uh, uh, uh. Mm, nice sandy beach along here. Almost like the one on our side of the island, huh? I wonder how far it might be from here to the Maryland coast. Cherry Bay coast of South America. Why, it must be miles. Hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? What is it? What's the matter? footprint. A footprint in the sand. A single footprint. Suddenly, the island that I thought was safe, deserted, seemed filled with danger. Unseen terror lurking in the jungle. Back in my stockade, I was afraid to venture out for several days. Savage might have made the footprint. So there were tribes of cannibals on the mainland, but I'd always thought that they were many miles away. Now, since I didn't know how far away they were, I brooded, worried, restless, watching, ever watching with my spyglass for some sign of a ship or a boat. It was on a Friday, I remember. I was watching. And then one came, a boat with ragged sails. Some sort of Indian canoe came paddling toward my beach. And I went scrambling through the jungle with my dog and musket, close to the point where it had landed. Quiet now, quiet. They mustn't know we're here. Probably cannibals, all right. Three of them have got a prisoner. Knives. Why, they're going to kill him, the prisoner. They must be cannibals. Why, no, 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 look. He's broken loose. He's running this way. We must help him. He's running this way. Here, here, this way. Come here. Come here, come on, yeah, come on, 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 you don't need to be afraid anymore. I won't hurt you. I don't know what you're saying. There's no need to fear those savages. Well, you can stay here on the island with me. I'll take care of you. I'll be glad to take care of you. I need someone to help me here. In return, I'll give you food and a place to rest. I'll teach you English. Show you how to farm and live the way we do in England. And... Since I found you on a Friday, that's what I'll call you. You, Friday. Hey, do you? That's right. Your name is Friday. Now, once more, Friday, play it once again. <laughs> I, 
Liv an Island. Mr. Crusoe's my fan. <laughs> Well, well, finished your work already? Oh, yes. Mr. Crusoe, all done. Plant many seeds, much corn. <laughs> I like work for you. Well, Friday, our new stockade completed? Oh, yes, Mr. Crusoe. I like very much to work with tools. Carpenter tools. Ah, you built a good, strong fence there. Well, I've needed that for several years. It's very strong, Mr. Crusoe. You've learned to be a good carpenter, Friday. <laughs> and a good woodsman. I like to learn to make things with my hands. Yes, I know. I have learned to do many kind work since you saved me on beach. Yes, you've been with me a long time, Friday. Long time, long time. Many moons. More moons than cinders. On my hands. Yes, at least two years. Long time. But I am happy to work for you, Mr. Crusoe. I, I like to stay beside you always. Always? Oh, yes, yes, always. If you like me. Don't you ever miss your own people, Friday? The tribe, the Indians, far from here on the mainland? No, no, no. I never think about them, Mr. Crusoe. Because I want to learn many kind work. I want to be, uh, how you say, uh, civilized. I want to be like you. I often wonder if I am still civilized. After all these years, alone. You miss, you miss your people, Mr. Crusoe? Yes, I miss them. More than I ever realized I could. You want much go back. To you people back England. That's all I've dreamt about for many years. As long as I can remember, I've thought only about escaping from this island. Oh, Friday, such dreams are hopeless, I'm afraid. Oh, if there was but a way I could escape. A uh, boat? I could build boat. And we could go together. No, Friday. We might reach the mainland with it, but that would be no help. The mainland's wild with tribes of Caribe cannibals. England is my destination. Then... We could build big boat, Mr. Crusoe. No, it'd take a bigger boat than we could ever build to sail to England. There is no way, no boat big enough? Yes, there's ships large enough. Ships? Ships. Great white birds. Larger than you've ever seen. Ooh. They've never come near this island. As long as I've been here, Friday, I've never seen a sailing ship come near. And one those those ships could take you back to England? Yes. You, you are lonely, Mr. Crusoe? Yes, Friday. Even with you here, it's not the same as England. But I've grown used to the loneliness. My father tried to save me once from this sort of life. Gave me very sound advice. You, father? Yes. I'd like to see him again. Tell him that I've learned my lesson well. I've learned the penalty of loneliness. Someday, someday, ship may come. You can go back. Perhaps. I hope so, Friday. Then, Mr. Crusoe, if you go to England... Yes? Friday, I want to go with you. To England? I want to go with you to work for you. You, you are my king, my master. No, Friday, I don't want a slave. If you go with me, you'll go as my friend. And after that, for months and months, we seemed to talk of nothing but escape. It all seemed hopeless in a way. That we were doomed to spend our lives on this forgotten island. Until one afternoon when we were hunting, Friday suddenly called. Mr. Crusoe! White bird at sea. Great white bird. A sail. It's a sail. Friday, it's a ship. A full-rigged clipper ship. It is so big. Great white bird. Yes. A ship has somehow reached our island. But as we watched, there seemed something strange about the ship. The way she lay at anchor without flags. Why was she there? Why had she picked my island? So when a long boat started out, 
We raced along the beach and waited, hiding in the tangled thicket. Well, easy now, McGuire. <coughs> easy, mate. Aye, sir. Aye, Captain. Lend a hand, Kramer. Get these empty water kegs unloaded. Aye, sir. There's a chance we might find fresh water here. Maybe. Certainly need fresh water aboard ship. Aye. Hmm. Island looks deserted. There may be wild animals. You got the pistol, McGuire? That's right, Captain. All right, then. Let's head up the beach. Oh, no, you don't, Captain Thompson. Eh? What Stand is... where you are, Captain. Why, what... This what... pistol's pointed right at your heart, Captain Thompson, and I mean to use it if I have to. Famous. I might. Think we ought to tie up the captain, huh? Good idea, McGuire. <laughs> Get that coil of rope from the longboat. Aye, aye, McGuire. Look here, mate. What's the meaning of this? Careful there, Captain. No false moves. But what are you going to do? You'll find out soon enough, Captain. This is just part of the plan me and Kramer worked out. Plan? To get you out of the way, Captain. You like this deserted island so well, we're gonna leave you here. What? Why, why you'll pay for this, McGuire. Oh, will I, Captain Thompson? <laughs> I'm giving the orders from now on, and when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. You hear? Good. Tie his hands first and lash him tight. All right, Maguire. But, but you can't do this. The ship. The ship is... You've seen the last of your ship, Captain Thompson. When me and Kramer get back aboard, I'm taking over command. I'll run the ship the way I want to. Mate, this is mutiny. Aye, aye, that's right. But the crew will never know. We'll tell him uh, you had an accident. No. And before you died, you made me captain. But you'll be caught. The authorities They'll will... never know what happened, Captain Thompson. But you can't... You can't leave me here. Why, the island's deserted. I'll... I'll starve. I'll... I'll die. That's the general idea, Captain. Me and Kramer don't think you're worth wasting powder and shot on. So we're going to tie you up and leave you here on the beach. Why... Why, you black I always I... said I'd get even with you, Captain Thompson. And it'll give me pleasure knowing you're tied to death. A slow death. On a deserted island. Yeah, a deserted island. What they do, Mr. Crusoe? What they mean? Mutiny. That's what it means. Mutiny. Mutiny. Righty, we must think of a scheme. A way to rescue the captain from those men, those fiends. That ship out there may be going back to England and freedom. We must think of a way to save the captain. Mr. Crusoe? Yes. I have plans. I go down to the... Lively there, Kramer. Hurry it up. I might. And lash his arms back. That's the main thing, so he can't swim for the ship before we get underway. But, but mate, huh? here, you can't leave me here alone. I implore you, please, don't leave me here alone. <laughs> Listen to the dog whine. No, no, please. Shut up. But you're, you're making a mistake. You have no reason to want hey, to... You're looking at that. Huh? Who's that, McGuire? An Indian. Hey, you, uh, mister, you, you come for treasure. Huh? Treasure? Who are you? How did you get here? Me live here. Find treasure in forest. Jewels, gold, silver. You come for treasure? Treasure? Huh? Maguire. You think there's a treasure on this island? Uh, there might be. You can't ever tell. Wouldn't hurt to look. Hmm. Hey, bye. Yes, mister. Uh, the treasure. Uh, where is it? It's a forest. I saw you. Hmm. I think I'll take a look, Kramer. I might. Now, keep your eye on Captain Thompson. Huh? But but I haven't got a pistol. Uh, you won't need one. I'll be right back. But, but my boy... I said I'd be right back. I'll keep him tied up. Hey, boy. Is it a big treasure? Huh, boy? A big treasure? Oh, yes, yes. Very big jewels. Silver. Yeah, there is, huh? Uh, well, where is it? Uh, where is the treasure? I saw you, mister. Through here. Through here, mister. Ah, uh, here it is. Huh? Where? I don't see any treasure. Where? Right behind you. Huh? And watch your step. This pistol of mine might go off. But, but take his gun, Friday. I have it, Mr. Crusoe. Crusoe? Hey, who are you? Hey, how could you... Be... Never mind who I am, Mr. Mate. Turn around and start walking back to your boat. Boat? Lively there, look alive. But, but, what are you going to do? You don't know why I'm here on this island. It's not hard to guess, Mr. Mate. I haven't seen a ship or a sailor for many years, but I can still recognize a mutiny. Mutiny? But how did you know? Never mind. Look alive there. It's 
going back to your boat and your legal captain. The captain? No. No, no, I wouldn't go back. Captain Thompson, they'll kill me. They'll hang me from a yard arm. A good idea. No, no, I won't go back. You can't make me. I run away. Come back or I'll shoot. No, no, I run away. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. <laughs> That's the story, Captain Thompson. Why, it's incredible, Crusoe. All these years I've been waiting for a ship to come and take me away from this lonely place. This is the first ship to ever sail near my little island. And you've lived here alone these many years? Yes, Captain. A miracle. It was a miracle, your gallant rescue. The way you suddenly appeared from the jungle, I, I can hardly believe it yet. And I'm indebted to you, Crusoe, for saving my life and for saving my ship. Thank you, Captain. How can I help you, Crusoe? How can I show my gratitude? I have only one request. Yes? Friday, my native friend and myself would like passage on your ship anywhere. Anywhere away from this island. Why, of course. To, uh, England, perhaps? We touch there within a year. To England, you say? Sir, you... You spoke of miracles. To me, that would be a miracle. to realize you've come back. Yes, Father. A little older, a little tired, but I've learned many things. I've come home to stay. And your friend here? Friday. You think you will like our civilization, Friday? Well, it's not the same as Alan, but I will learn. I will like it. Robinson tells me you're a true friend. He taught me how to do many things. Uh -huh. And Friday taught me many things. What do you mean, son? Patience, most of all. And the will to go on living, even though I was alone and lonely. You know, Father, I've never forgotten what you told me the day I went away. About loneliness. I didn't believe you then. I know you didn't, son. You said I'd learn someday about loneliness when I was without friends and hope and courage. And I have learned. Yes, yes. You stood the test of loneliness, my son. And whether or not you're a man, we let the world decide. That's the story of Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe's classic tale as adapted for radio by Tom Goutte. Crusoe was played by John Thomas, Friday by Juano Hernandez. Others in the cast were Neil Fitzgerald, Rod Hendrickson, Paul Conrad, Kermit Murdoch, Ed Cullen, and Brad Barker. The music was by Doc Whipple, and the entire production was under the direction of Joseph Mansfield. Listen to Adventure Ahead each week for the stories of gallant deeds to appeal to the young in heart of every age. NBC and its affiliated independent stations present Adventure Ahead as a public service. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.